Regrettably, ships come to grief. But recovering maritime casualties is the business of Weissmuller salvage. In any salvage operation, the one thing that counts above all others is success. Often first in the saving of lives and always in the saving of property, both equipment and environment. Weissmuller has over 80 years intense experience of conducting successful salvage operations. Well over 1,000 have been professionally completed and include almost every kind of casualty imaginable. Being a highly specialized worldwide salvage company, Weissmuller consistently keeps pace with the development in expertise and equipment. It can conduct the most treacherous and complicated salvage operations arising today. And doing so, the company ensures its ability to maintain its history of salvage success. On December the 25th, 1973, on her maiden voyage, the Liberian ore carrier Elwood Mead ran aground near the Isle of Guernsey in the English Channel. The ship is carrying 123,000 tons of iron ore granules. While the first salvage equipment is loaded on a chartered plane to be flown to Guernsey, plans are being made by the salvers for refloating the vessel. In Amauden, at Weissmuller's head office, special salvage vessels are mobilized and loaded with equipment. Meanwhile, at the scene of the Elwood Mead, divers are investigating the condition of the vessel when the first equipment arrives. Work can begin. Day and night, preparations are being made for the pressurizing operation to lift the Elwood Mead off the rocks. Pumps are installed to pump the water out of leaking tanks. Air hoses are connected. The pressurization process can begin. Eight days after the grounding, a first attempt is made to refloat the vessel. Although the Weissmuller tugs succeed in shifting the Elwood Mead 13 degrees, she is still firmer ground and bad weather is on hand. Heavy storms batter the stranded vessel, damaging not only the ship, but also the deck equipment, much of which is lost overboard. Work already done by the salvers is destroyed. Because of the bad weather conditions, new equipment has to be replaced by helicopter. Wind force 12 is recorded. These storms again cause immense damage. New plans are made. It is decided that about 30,000 tons of ore will have to be discharged by special pumps over the side. This drawing shows how the refloating operation is planned. Four tugs, three connected to the bow and one to the stern, assisted by two ground anchors, will tow the vessel towards deeper water when she is slowly refloated. After discharging enough ore, another refloating attempt can be made. Towing connections are attached. A last briefing and pressurization begins. Air valves are opened. 
pumps are switched on and the air pressure builds up. Tugs begin pulling. The salvage master feels the Elwood Mead shifting and the tugs are ordered to full power while de-ballasting and pressurizing continues. On the 24th of February, the vessel is afloat and the Weissmuller house flag is raised to mark the moment. The Elwood Mead has been refloated but has to be kept afloat on the 320 mile journey to Rotterdam. Before entering the port of Rotterdam, the draft of the Elwood Mead has to be reduced from 73 to less than 70 feet. Four excavators are placed on deck of the ore carrier for unloading a part of her cargo 40 miles out in the North Sea. In the harbor of Rotterdam, the ship is completely discharged. She is delivered to dry dock. It is the end of the salvage of the Elwood Mead, otherwise known at Weissmuller as salvage 849. Only 800 meters from the spot where the Elwood Mead went on the rocks, and five years later, a barge transporting the jack-up rig Orion broke loose from its tow during a storm and also washed up on the treacherous Guernsey coast. The plan is to free the barge, move it to deep water, sink the barge and float the rig off to safety. However, an attempt to do it in this way ends in failure. Because of bad weather and the worsening condition of the barge, new tactics are necessary. Prevailing bad weather forces the salvers to pull the rig off the barge using brute force. The tugs Typhoon and Groningen are used for this job. Helped by one large wave, they succeed in sliding the rig off the barge. Leaving a heavily damaged barge on the rocks, still carrying some expensive equipment. To refloat the barge by a compressed air system, the holes have to be closed. Also, this refloating operation is successfully completed by Weissmuller. The roll-on, roll-off freight ferry European Gateway is lying two miles out from the east coast of England. On December the 19th, 1982, she was in collision with another ferry and capsized on a sandbank. Many trailers of the 48 truck units she was carrying were tipped on their sides to hang in their lashings. A salvage plan is soon prepared by Weissmuller. The ferry will be levered by means of eight 30-ton winches placed on deck of Super Servant 3, one of a fleet of heavy lift vessels operated by Weissmuller Transport. Eight specially fabricated cantilevers are positioned and welded on the hull of the ferry. They will be connected to the winches through a system of chains, a pair of pulley blocks and a steel hawser. On the other side of Super Servant 3, the winches are attached to the 30-ton anchors. Air hoses are connected to pump the main deck full of compressed air during the writing operation. When all preparations are made, the writing operation begins. The winches are started up. Slack in the cables is taken up. The combined pulling power of the eight winches is 2,400 tons. The tension on both ship and salvage team builds up. The ferry starts to rise. The pull proceeds smoothly. Slowly, the starboard side of the European gateway emerges from the sea. The twisted and battered superstructure of the vessel is clearly visible, but the damage is all superficial. When the ship is nearly 80 degrees upright, the winches are stopped. The writing has gone according to plan. Much of the wreck of the structure will have to be removed. The damage the salvers find on board appears to be considerable. 
vehicles are smashed and piled on top of each other in a giant scrap heap. One of the first jobs for the salvers is to remove the debris from the deck. Before the European gateway can be towed away, the main collision damage to the hull must be covered. The next job is to pump the hold clear of water and mud. In total, about 10,000 tons of water must be removed. The first inspection of the lower vehicle deck reveals the full extent of the damage to the trailers and containers. At last, the European gateway can be moved under tow. Destination of the voyage is Amsterdam. There, she is safely berthed and the battered trailers are unloaded. The European Gateway is towed a short distance to enter dry dock for re-delivery by Weissmuller. Eventually she is repaired in Greece and she is now sailing the Greek waters under a new name. On the 31st of March 1988, the Cypriot motor tanker Haven was attacked in the Gulf and caught fire. The ship was loaded with well over 200,000 tons of crude oil. One of the firefighting tugs operated by Weissmuller in the Gulf was first alongside to rescue the crew and start fighting the fire. Two tugs and the special firefighting and rescue vessel Jetwise were mobilized to extinguish the frightening fire. This operation took more than 12 hours. Because the tanker still lies in these dangerous waters of the war zone, she is towed beyond them, where a salvage team is taken to the stricken vessel. In the roads off the Emirate of Fujairah, the salvers drop anchor. Preparations are made for an over-the-top transfer operation of the crude oil of the haven into another tanker an operation in which Weissmuller salvage has long specialized. Oxygen levels are carefully measured. By means of inert gas, the oxygen concentration in board is kept under 5% to reduce the danger of explosion. More fenders are placed alongside to serve as cushions between the two tankers. Strict safety precautions have to be taken because the slightest spark might cause a disaster. While the haven is held in position, the relief tanker arrives. On deck of the haven, hoses are connected and unrolled. The relief tanker is carefully, very carefully, maneuvered alongside the haven. More hoses are unrolled and connected. The whole operation is supervised and controlled by a Weissmuller salvage master. On the haven, the hoses are connected to the tanks. Special pumps are used for the overtop transfer operation of the crude oil. Hoses are taken to the relief vessel and connected to receive the oil. The transfer operation can begin. The valves of the manifolds are opened and the instruction is given to start up the hydraulic pumps. Right. 
the hoses fill and the oil is gradually transferred from the haven to the relief tanker. And with more than 200,000 tons of crude oil needing to be transferred, this operation lasts a few days, carefully controlled 24 hours a day by Weissmuller salvage experts. After the tankers are disconnected, the haven is towed off for repair. Another operation has been successfully completed. Weissmuller and salvage, a history of success. The Dutch have been salvers for more than a century and nearly a century of remarkable worldwide performance in the maritime industries has gained Weissmuller a solid reputation. Weissmuller salvers have largely contributed to that name by having conducted often spectacular salvage and rescue operations, from straight refloating of stranded ships to wreck and cargo removals, over the top transfers of oily and dangerous cargoes, firefighting operations and other complex salvage assignments. Weissmuller salvers are at home in all these specialist challenges and they know that in any salvage operation the only thing that counts is success. Weissmuller has maintained its leading position in the salvage industry by concentrating on its know-how, the master hand combined with specialist equipment. The engineering and administrative capability to quickly assess a casualty situation and come up with a well-organized plan covering all logistics and contingencies is only gained from long, hands-on experience. Salvage specialists at Weissmuller have to live up to the highest standards in full accordance with their responsibility towards both the property to be salvaged and the environment. With an international organization linked across the world, Weissmuller salvage teams are backed up by a large inventory of equipment including the strongest salvage tugs for optimum job performance. While at the head office, the necessary engineering know-how is available for expert assistance to the men at the site. The salver in person is the vital link in today's salvage industry. His pure experience makes him salvage master of the world and Weissmuller the reliable partner in salvaging shipping casualties. Weissmuller Salvage operates globally, but now and then the company performs a salvage operation practically at the front door of its Dutch headquarters like the rescue operation of the fish factory vessel Jinsakrasts. She collided with a container vessel and ran aground in the North Sea Canal. The crash has caused a gaping six meter diameter hole in the ship's hull on the starboard side. Tugs operated by Weissmuller's Amsterdam-based port towage company Hoodkoop are deployed for the refloating operation. First, the salvers ballast the vessel to ensure a safe and successful refloating operation. Now, the powerful tugs can make an attempt to free the vessel from its precarious position. Slowly, the Jinsakrasts glides back in the water. The tugs keep the stricken factory ship in position to prevent her from capsizing and sinking. The damage to the vessel is clearly visible. To effectively contain a potential oil spill, an oil slick boom is placed around the vessel. At a nearby quay, the salvers first have to patch the giant hole in the hull before the vessel is allowed to be towed to a dry dock for repairs. The sizable steel plate, 10 by 6 meters, is lifted by a crane over the hole. Meanwhile, pumps are installed to pump out the flooded compartments. 
The patch is precisely positioned over the hole and set tight to the ship's hull. After the necessary arrangements have been made, the ship can depart. The safe arrival of the Jinsakrasts at the dry dock in Amsterdam marks the successful and quick completion of another Weissmuller salvage operation. In 1992, and for the second time within three years, Weissmuller was involved in a complicated wreck removal operation on Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Both times the object salvaged was a drilling barge. The second Weissmuller operation involves the drilling barge C-201. While doing drilling work on the busy lake, the C-201 had capsized. Before making a definite salvage plan, the salvers pay a visit to drilling barge C-202, the sister vessel of the C-201, in order to understand the superstructure of the C-201 disappeared under the water surface. The plan is to right the 60 meter long and 20 meter wide barge by means of ballasting. By pumping air into the tanks on one side of the barge and letting out the air of the tanks on the other side, the barge will turn over. Two crane barges are deployed to assist with the operation. Preparations are made on deck of one of the crane barges and on the bottom of the capsized barge. To link the towing cables of the barges, heavy-duty pad eyes are welded to the side of the barge. For the ballasting and deballasting operation, air connections are placed in the special holes made in the bottom of the barge. Heavy equipment, like sheave blocks needed for the writing operation, is lifted aboard. More holes are needed to accommodate the air connections. A pile driving barge arrives on the site. The C201 has to be fixed to a number of piles for the turning operation. The crane driver precisely positions the piles. The piles are driven deep into the bottom of Lake Maracaibo. The sheave blocks needed to create extra pulling power for the writing operation are lifted aboard. A great number of cables is needed for connecting the crane barge with the capsized C-201. The salvers lay out the pulling gear on deck of the crane barge. There are two winches installed which each, together with sheave blocks, can generate a pulling power of 200 tons. Aboard the capsized C-201, the salvers connect the cables of the crane barge to the pad eyes. The cables that go underneath the capsized barge are brought in. 
The cables are rigged on the sheave blocks and spooled on the winches. A lot of the preparations and connections have been made underwater. A Weissmuller diver checks whether everything is in good order. The pulling arrangement is ready for the turning operation. Now the air hoses are connected to the manifold to pump in the air for de-ballasting. The valves are opened on the other side of the barge. A second crane barge has been moored alongside the C201 to assist with the turning operation. The cables are hooked to the crane barge and the actual writing operation starts. Winches are started and slack in the cables is taken up. The drilling barge is ballasted on one side by letting out the air. Together with the hoists and pulling tackles of both crane barges, the turning operation continues. The C-201 is slowly rolled over. The Weissmuller salvage master accurately guides the complicated operation. The battered superstructure surfaces. Submersible pumps are installed to speed up the deballasting operation. You lose no time above. The barge is now righted, but is still listing heavily. Extra pumps are installed to raise buoyancy. The salvers are satisfied. They have returned the C-201 to her normal position. The barge can now be towed and no longer poses a threat to the shipping traffic on the busy lake. Veracruz, a busy port on the west coast of Mexico, important for national goods transit. At the close of 1992, Weissmuller had to perform an unusual salvage operation just outside the port. The roll-on, roll-off vessel Shesti Desietilietje got stuck on a reef in bad weather and suddenly found herself high and dry aground about four miles out. With the vessel, 42 brand new luxury tour buses were stranded in sight of their terminal station, Vera Cruz. After having removed 900 tons of bunker oil to avert a possible oil spill, it is time for Weissmuller to catch the buses. The valuable cargo has to be rescued, an unusual offshore operation. It has been decided that the buses will be driven onto barges and towed into the port. It is not an easy job because of the periods of adverse weather conditions, the treacherous breakers, and the fact that the ship had been swept a good four meters up the reef. The first barge is carefully maneuvered in front of the bow of the ship under the loading ramp. To make a smooth ride possible from the ramp onto the barge, dunnage is used.
Once safely moored, the buses can be driven onto the barges. For the drivers, handling a bus on the open seas is not a day-to-day -day routine. So they now wear a different uniform. The first bus comes slowly down the ramp. Driving a bus onto a moving barge is not the easiest operation and the solvers do not want the buses to be damaged. The first bus is parked on the barge, which can carry eight buses. Still 41 buses to go. The upper deck of the roll-on, roll-off vessel is now nearly empty. Under the glaring lights of the vessel and of the buses, work continues at night to make optimum use of the good brakes in the bad weather. The bad weather necessitates interruption of the operation at regular intervals. Due also to the strong breakers around the ship, discharging is possible only a few hours per day. As soon as the weather allows it, the salvers continue the operation. Again, the ramp is lowered. The salvers manage to drive all the buses on the barge unscratched, and subsequently they safely haul this rolling stock to the shore. In total, six transports were made from the vessel to the port. On the quay, all buses are thoroughly cleaned. Immediate action is required because the salty environment poses a threat to the condition of the vehicles. After inspection, Weissmuller delivers the buses to their owners, thus skillfully rounding off a series of very short and highly unusual bus trips. Weissmuller salvers operate worldwide, from the busy waters of the North Sea to the distant coasts of Brazil. In spring 1992, the fully laden Greek ore carrier Achilleus struck the rocks while leaving the port of Vittorio, headed for Rotterdam. Right away, a salvage team is taken to the scene to make a first inspection. The impact caused severe damage to the foreship and the vessel's double bottom. The forepart of the bulk carrier sits hard aground, and several tanks, as well as some of the ship's double bottom tank, have been breached. In close coordination with the local authorities, a salvage plan is drawn up by the salvage master. Meanwhile, aboard the Achilleus, the salvers descend to the tanks in order to further examine the condition of the vessel.
Preparations are made for closing the damaged tanks. They have to be made airtight and then air pressurized in order to give the vessel enough lift for the refloating operation. Not the best working conditions one can imagine, but the salvers are used to it. An elaborate cargo of salvage equipment has been flown to Brazil and taken to the stranded vessel by a local tug. The equipment includes generators, hoses, compressors, and pumps. Pumps are placed deep inside the tanks of the carrier to pump out the water from the leaking tanks. Divers have to go down to place steel patches over the tears in the ship's bottom. To measure the air pressure inside the tanks, pressure gauges are installed. The compressors are started and the pressure inside the tanks builds up. After the pressurizing operation has been completed, there is a moment's rest for the salvers. A few hours later, at the crack of dawn, towage connections are made with the tugs to pull the Achilleus off the rocks at the next high tide. Two tugs are connected to the bow, one tug to the stern. Still a few hours to go before high tide. The salvage master instructs the captains of the tugs. Water depths are checked again. Now the draft of the Achilleus has been reduced and it's high tide. The tugs are ordered to pull. Slowly, the Achilleus moves and is successfully freed from her awkward position. The salvers are satisfied. Again, a ship has been refloated. After a thorough diving inspection by Weissmuller, the Achilleus is allowed to head for Rotterdam, the destination of the cargo.
Weissmuller takes care of the ship's transatlantic crossing under escort of a tug. After 24 days sailing, supervised by Weissmuller, the Achilleus safely reaches Rotterdam. And is moored at the ore terminal. There, the solvers demobilize the salvage gear used for this operation, and the cargo of iron ore is unloaded. After the Achilleus is unloaded, the salvers deliver her to her owner, marking the happy end of this risky salvage venture. Weissmuller salvage again confirms Dutch mastery in rescuing maritime hardware. <laughs>